last year started out rough and the team just gelled and came out and had phenomenal results. Yeah. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, 94, 97 wins, something like that. 94 wins, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah. incredible. Yeah, more than Columbia HTC. Yeah. We put five more on the board than they did. Um, yeah, I think that's a little bit about the, uh, you know, the culture of the team that, that did that. Um, you know, as Australians, we, we just get on and do the job. Um, we tend to do it well and have a good time afterwards, tell a few jokes and, and get on with it. Uh, you know, it's, um, uh, it's tough when you, your trade's from home. You know, you, you can't actually ply your trade at home. So you, everyone's pretty well engaged. You know, we're, we came here, things didn't turn out quite the way we would have liked initially. Uh, but to look, everything happens for a reason. Every cloud's got a silver lining. And, and uh, you know, we, we were able to focus on the goals uh, that we had set ourselves and let the scoreboard do the talking. So I think by the end of the year, I think we'd turned something that could have been you know, reasonably adverse into something that was really positive, something that created a tremendous culture of mateship, uh, something that uh, allowed us to focus on what drives success, and that is success. Uh, and we went out there and kicked the goals that we needed to. What do you do to get these guys to become a family? How do you create that? Yeah, I think first and foremost, you've got to lead by example. Um, there's nothing that um, I'll expect anyone to do in the organisation that I won't do myself. So I think there's, there, there's the first thing. I think hard work um, tends to be required in anything you want to be successful at. Uh, look, again, I'm, I'm happy to work as hard as it, and to do what it takes. And I think, you know, that type of leadership by example is important as well. Uh, Look, we, we, uh, the 15 guys on the team are like little brothers to me um, uh, and the staff, we're very close as well. Uh, so we have, we're all well engaged in terms of our mission and objectives and, and what we're doing is something that we really want to be doing. I think there's a lot of passion, a lot of drive uh, by everybody. We don't take it for granted though. I mean, we gone a, a step further this year by putting mateship um, inside every collar of every shirt that we will print uh, that Santini provides with uh, to the team. All the caps that we produce will have it on it too. So we, we've got some constant reminders uh, because there will be challenges. The, the road's not always smooth. The road is bumpy from time to time. But one of the things that will be the constant will be our culture of mateship. And I think that will drive through. And in Australian terms, Mateship is really all about you know, being in the trenches in warfare and, take, and being ready to take a bullet for your, for your, for the, your buddy. You know. and, and it's that type of engagement, it's that type of friendship, it's that type of bond that everybody has within the team that, that resonates so loudly and so strongly. And that's what got us through 2009 and into 2010 in a much bigger and better way. 2010 is a pivotal year for us, so 2010 needs to be about success for the team. Um, now that's going to be on a number of fronts, that's going to be uh, our key metric obviously is, is number of wins um, and there are a whole lot of others. Um, it's not a winnable cost, it's just uh, focusing on what needs to drive us to our, to our objectives. You know, North America is a really important place for us, we believe uh, we have a long term view on North America, uh, particularly the US. Uh, we think it's a great place to be, you know, very welcoming people. We had some tremendous experiences uh, last year where we had the red carpet treatment wherever we went. Um, so we, we've got a really good view on America and the racing's tremendous. Uh, but we also are doing things a little bit differently. We're not an Australian team that's just going straight to Europe and, and hoping to crack it in, in, in the tough conditions or the uh, the 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 circus that is European cycling. We're here cutting our teeth logistically, we're here cutting our teeth away from home, we're here honing all of those skills and getting to bigger and better races. Races like the Tour of California, should we be able to get there in 2010, as the doorway to the Tour de France. Uh, it's the doorway to Europe. You know, you've got a great result there this year. will open doors in the Grand Tours for us. Uh, so we're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, we also have a long-term view on North America. If we're to achieve our objectives and get a, a pro tour team up and running, 
we, we intend to leave a U23 continental team here. Um, so we have a very long-term view on being in North America. We're doing what you know, North America did in the late 70s with 7-Eleven and the frontiers that were, 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 cha were challenged and broken through. Um, you know, it's a very similar scenario where we're 30 odd years behind, but it's the same type of um, goal that we've set ourselves. You know, we're, we're climbing Everest, the north face of Everest. Um, and, and everyone's proud of that. You know, um, we're, we're, um, we're, we're, I suppose as a group of people, we're f scared of failure, but not of having a go. And I think everybody's really proud of getting out there and having a go. And I think that's part of our culture is we will have a go. We'll give it a red hot crack and see how we end up. I mean, if we fail, well, we gave it a red hot crack. Look, I, I don't think we can fail from here. I think we've got the momentum. I think we've got some great corporate support. We need more. But we've also got really well engaged staff and, and riders as teammates. Um, so I, I think they're, they're proud of, in, in a complex way, there's a whole number of things um, that, that go to make that, that sense of well-being and sense of being and sense of engagement. But um, I think overall, I think they're really engaged in the journey and, and probably see it as an opportunity to do something as a team that, that's got legacy. What, what drives me is I want to do something with my life that's good and, and that, that I can add value to others. I want to give. But I, I, I also want Bernie Salzberger, who is a great cyclist, to have a career. Without me, he's got nothing. Well, you know, he has now, because he's shown to the rest of the world what he's got. But two years ago when I engaged him, he was, um, you know, thinking about hanging it up at the ripe, ripe old age of 22, 23. I didn't make it. He deserved a pro career, so we're doing it for Bernie. Johnny Cantwell had a breakthrough year last year, 29 wins. Huge win. 29 season. 29 wins, some great ones. Look, I mean, Bernie was the first person to win Super Week, leading it from start to finish. 41 years of Super Week, no one did that. Won at Utah, won Tour of Tassie, won heaps of other races in between. Johnny won 29 races. Johnny Cantwell, I picked him up as the last rider signed in January 2009, barely 12 months ago. He was just about to walk into a bike shop and say, I'm done. Mm -hmm and I'm gonna work in a bike shop for the rest of my life. I'm doing for Johnny, I'm doing for Bernie. H Hank retired with nothing to do, I'm doing for Hank. Look, I'm doing it for myself too, um, because I, I'm, this is my passion, this is what really rings my bell, you know, but you have a look at each individual, you know, they're, they're all, you know, I'm investing in them, they're investing in me. You know, we're all in this together. Chris, I'm very impressed. I wish you great success in 2010. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jonathan. Delightful.